You know how they shooting up shit over there in Pakistan and Afghanistan? That's how it, that's how it was over there. Fucking What's up, y'all? It's your boy Sonny Townsend, the Browns Villian Podcast. I want to take it left a little bit, you know what I mean? I want to take it a little bit left. I want to pay homage to some of these dudes that stepped in front of my camera. You know what I mean? Some of these dudes, they bless me with their presence, bless me with their talent, you know what I mean? And they no longer here. You know what I mean? Some of them gone through gun violence. Some of them just probably died of natural causes. You know what I mean? Some of them locked up in prison for God knows how long. You know what I mean? Got them football number bids. You know what I mean? I want to pay homage to these dudes, man, because without these dudes, I couldn't have did what I did. You know what I mean? The documentaries and all that that I did. They help me. You know what I mean? Basically, you know, I've been up too. Fucking New York City, man, it's always gonna be drugs and brownfield, man. Good news. It's better than reality, man. <laughs> Tell me $50 you'll go $25 on me, Pop? Cause you're a celebrity! <laughs> Man, I've been talking to you times in my world. My name is Lisa, and I'm from Brownsville. Everybody take their fall, you know. Strong survive, you know. They will always live in our heart, you know what I mean? We'd never be forgotten. Right now, on the Browns Villian show, we gonna talk to my man, Dollar Bill. Yo, this dude, man, back when we was coming up and we was young bucks, man, we used to look up to this dude, man. And a lot, and that's what's crazy about the hood because a person can be doing wrong and you as a young buck, you don't even know what they, that the stuff that they going through and the stuff that they doing. You just see them with a lot of money, they getting money, and you see them chilling and they got a lot of respect, and, and that's the path you want to follow. Because you want the respect of the hood, you want to be having paper in your pocket, you know, you want chicks to like you, you know what I mean? So some of us follow that path, not knowing what that path led him to. So my man Dollar Bill, I think he went to jail, well first start bidding when he was about 18 years old. And he kind of like probably 50s, late 50s right now. And from 18 to 50, whatever, this dude probably been on the street probably like a couple of years out of that. So that means he did a whole lot of time. He's been bidding since he was 18 years old, back and forth, back and forth. But um, I just want y'all to check this out. I went to go check them and check this out. My man, Dollar Bill. First of all, I want to ask you how it was for you coming up in Brownsville as a youngster. Rough. I mean. My mother and father both died at a young age when I was young. You know, my aunt raised us. I call her mother. My mother, my mother passed. So, you know, and I was living in Langston Hills like 50 something years. Mm. When it first opened, I used to live in Brown for 50 something years. Mm -hmm. Moving for the best stop. But I mean, it was rough. Was it, was it, I mean, rough just. Like just going, trying to go to the store, cause me coming up, taking the garbage out at night, incinerators. That's that's what I'm trying to get to. Like, like me just going to the store. Sometimes it was hard to just go get your mother what your mother want and bring it back. So that's why I'm trying to 
trying to figure out how it was during your era. Because you was, a, you was before me, so was, was it crazy? I used to live on the 22nd floor. I used to sit a lot of methadol, dope things up there, shoot a roof on the roof. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I used to be scared. As a little young man, I used mm -hmm. to be scared. You know, but I mean, after a while, you know, you start knowing people and you know what's about. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You see the struggle they was going through. Everybody got different struggles. Right. But you know, I think the struggle they was going through. They start respecting me and I start respecting them. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what it is too, you know, like they see you a lot. Sometimes you get respect, but then also, some dudes ain't care about giving you the respect. They want to try to go in your pockets. You know what I mean? Like, what I'm trying to say, like, you could be respected by a certain few dudes. At, at, one, at, at, at one time, let me tell you something. At one time, in Langston Hill, you used to sleep on the bench all night long. Nobody used to never go in your pocket. To, mm -hmm. I mean, it used to be unity. Right. In there. But now, everybody wants something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're lucky if you go to sleep at night time, you won't have no panic at all. Right. Right. And that, was that way back when? Or, because how was Langston Hughes back, before, way back in the days? Langston Hughes used to be one of the toughest projects out there. People used to be scared to walk through Langston Hughes. Hmm. You know, now, I mean, instead of throwing, Balls out the window, you throw bodies out the window. <laughs> Refrigerators. You know, now it's rough out there now. Yeah, I, I remember them days seeing all type of stuff come off the roof. Refrigerated. I mean, even living in the projects, you had to look up on your way walking towards the project just to see if anything coming down. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know the Bloods and Crips is like running wild now. You know what I mean? They doing their thing out there and all different, you know, Brownsville and all different sections of Brownsville. You got the blue, you got the red. Was there any gangs like when you was coming up in Brownsville? Yes, Tom Hawks, Unknown Riders, Brothers, Champions, Outlaws, Jolly Stoppers, Seven No Man, mm. Seven Crimes. Mm. So, so was you, uh, did you indulge in any of the. Yes, Unknown Riders and Tom Hawks. See, I ain't know nothing about that. Yep. So, so, but what was the difference between the gangs back then and the gangs now? Yo, back then you used to have zip guns. You know, nothing like no nine millimeter, no 38. We used to have a little pen with a gun, with a bullet. You know, we used to go out best that park and pay our dues. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And right down the block, that's here park, you know, on Southern Herzl, you had the Black Panthers. Yeah, you know what I mean? Used to fight with changes, baseball bats, but never no guns. Mm -hmm. So, so, like, what, what I'm trying to get at, um, I understand that, but was it like a uh, respect thing with, with the gangs? I mean, because... Respect like, I was all the ladies. I mean, right. your elder. Right. You know what right. I mean? Because that's what I heard when I was, I was talking to somebody else, another OG from Brownsville, and he said, back in, like, if you and somebody had beef, they gave you a pass if you was with your moms or, or yeah, your, I mean, your girl. Respect or, your elders. Right. Babies and kids. Right. And old people. Right. Don't do nothing in front of them. Right. And they also said that it was about, I just, like, protected your area. The Southern movie used to be Unknown Riders. Picking up movie on picking used to be the Jolly, Jolly Stoppers and the picking movie on Southern and Van Sickman used to be the Tomahawks. Mm. You know, there's only three games come out of, I mean, two out of Brownville and one from Crown Heights, Jolly Stoppers. Okay. Okay. Is, is anything that you want to talk about, about Brownsville? Yes. Stand school, get your education. <laughs> I mean, I had to get out of Brownville. Hmm. You know, I mean, a lot of people I grew up with, he was dead. You know, I'm in North Carolina now. You know, 
Brownville is not the place to be. Hmm. You're a young man out there doing dirt. I know I'll, it's a better life for me. Hmm. It's a lot of better place for I mean, people in love, like news. You know, now you got young boys out there trying to make a name for yourself. Hmm. It ain't the way. I know a lot of brothers who grew up with me ain't never seen the streets known again in life. Hmm. You know, and they went away when they were 23, 22. Still going. They still going strong. I mean, they ain't going strong, but they, they still locked bidding, up. Still bidding, yeah, still yeah. bidding, yeah. Yeah, and it's 30 years already. Right. Yeah, one of my yeah. boys just came home from doing 30 years. Brent, you know Brent? Yeah. Across the street, yeah. yeah. I think he did about 28 or something like that, 26, 30, something like that. Yeah, I seen him when I was up there for Old Timers Day. He just came home, too. Yeah. Crazy. So, um, so what year you said you started bidding? When I was 18. Wow. So, what was your first bid like? What was, what, 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 was, what they gave you on your first bid? Oh, zip, zip five. Mm -hmm. So, you did straight flat five? Nah, zip five. You go up there to see the parole board. Then they should come back, come back in two years. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I did. Yeah, so I think I did three and a half. Mm. That was a, that was, that was a young buck. Yeah. Then you just it was like a repeated thing. You just kept going I back. Mean, I come home September. I'll be right back November. Mm. You know what I mean? Parole violation. I did four state bids, eight parole violations. You know what I mean? What that was just from knocking niggas out? Cause I know, I, know, nah, I remember you nah. was nice with the hand. Yeah, yeah. That was just from knocking niggas out and they telling on you? Nah. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was another thing that was crazy. Like, I used to see the OGs, like, they used to be getting it in back in the days, yeah. you know what I mean? Yo. Yo, say what up, bro? What's good, money? Yeah, nothing. Guess, How are you, bro? Guess who I'm with? I'm sitting, I'm sitting here interviewing your boy Dollar Bill, y'all. What's up? What's up? Hey, man. How you doing? I'm doing a lot. Thank God. How about yourself, bro? I'm all right. I'm all right. Okay. Been a long time, bro. Yeah. Long, long time. Yeah. Well, I remember from back in the days that I was in L.A. Yeah. I remember when you was out here knocking niggas out. Yeah. <laughs> We just was talking about that. So, let me, let, me, let me ask you something, bro. Since you've been away all them years, how did you survive up there in prison? Excuse me? <laughs> yeah, how did you survive up there all them years? All them years. Be yourself, be real. Mind my business. Okay, so you didn't have to get you join any game? No. No, no uh uh. No. Okay, because see, a lot of them tell these young brothers to get you in the game when they get locked up. Uh uh. No. That's not me. Okay. Well, well, back when you was big, there was no gangs out there, <laughs> right? It was just Muslims uh, and Latin, 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 right? Latin kings and AC Doocy's. Yeah. God bodies, Muslims. Right, right. It was five percent of Muslims mostly back in them days. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's up. Yo, let me ask you another question. Yes. Okay. Um, if you can turn back the hands of time, what would you have changed? Excuse me. Hmm. So what would you have did, done different if you could do it over? Don't go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go to jail. Don't don't do the robberies. Right. <laughs> he said, don't do the robberies. Don't go to jail. Don't go to jail. That's what I'm looking for. That's what's up, Bill. But you look good, though, bro. See, this guy, a lot of these young brothers out here, they going back and forth to jail. They come home. They right back in the summertime. I'm like, whoa, what's going on, there? After a while, after, after a while, you get too old for that. That's true. You know, it, it, I mean, you start to wise up. It's no way for me. I mean. 
This is right here where I'm sitting at right now? Yes. I call the shots. Mm. Okay, you really changed your life and you're looking well done. Thank you. Yep, for real. Man, get, get out here and talk to some of these young brothers and sisters out here. And tell them how you did when you was locked up. Jail was different back then too, huh? Because, I mean, they had a lot of booty bandits up there back in the day. That's all they had. Yeah. That's all they had. But, I mean, you go in there, we nuked you. So, so did you have to right. save some youngsters from the Langston Hughes from the booty bandits up there? I, I saved a lot of people. It's not for the booty bandits. It's just want to cut them up. Mm. So, so you saved a lot of people? Yes. Yeah. Because I know, I know, I know somebody was telling me, when they came, when they came through or whatever, they seen you and you just had shit in the smash. You just telling people, yo, don't fuck with my man. Uh -uh. And he said he is all right after that. Yeah, I've been in every building on Rackers Island. H HDM, 95, C74, the woman house. Back then, it used to be C C71 used to be open then. Hmm. Yes. They can't get another day from me. Okay, that's what's up. Now you're drinking the beer in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> yep, he said it's over. He said he don't wash his hands on that, and that's that's a good thing though. But okay, what's the thing you would tell? Yeah. I, I, what's what's a, what's a good thing you would tell a you so they don't follow in your footsteps? Ain't no fast money out here. <laughs> ain't ain't nothing but slow money. Mm -hmm. Get a nine to five. Mm -hmm. That's the best net. That's the best way to get money. It's a nine to five. Stay in your lane. Right. You know don't don't go outside the box. Get in the box. Don't try to be what you're not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, and stay and stay away from them robberies. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. You remember, you remember that? Yes. Yeah. Senior sister. That's right. Senior sister. So, so how much time were you did? How much time you did when you did that? Six to twelve. Wow. Wow. Six to twelve. And that was right after you did the three and a half. I I I, I don't remember. I can't recall. Wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. I remember that. a lot of them years. I mean, <laughs> I told you. I'm 59 years old. I saw Ben from 18. I only been in the streets three and a half years. Right. No more than three and a half years. I mean, from 80, from 18 to 59. Oh, wow. What's that? Three years on the street. Wow, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, y'all, that was crazy, right? See, that's what I'm about. I, I always been about that. I always been about trying to put people on the map, or put Brownsville on the map, or just exposing people's talent. I've always been about that since I picked up the camera, you know what I mean? I've been trying to either that or school the youngin on what not to do or don't go that route, take this route. I've always been about that. And that's what we're gonna do on this show, Browns Villains, you know what I mean? We're gonna expose a lot of talent. We're gonna expose, you know what I mean? The way certain people lived in the hood, some of the stuff they went through. You know what I mean? And we just gonna bring it to y'all raw. I've been doing this filming stuff for a long time, so I'm kinda glad to have this little platform to like to expose a lot of stuff that's going on in Brownsville or that went on in Brownsville because everybody in Brownsville got a story. All Brownsvillians got a story. We all been through some shit. You know what I mean? We all been through some shit. So, we want to hear some of these stories, you know what I mean? And we're going to bring it to y'all right here on Brown's Villain. You know what I mean? So today, I'll switch it up a little bit, you know what I mean? Like I told y'all before, I used to go around with this camera, getting a lot of, lot of footage. A, a whole lot of footage. I mean, I was, I used to get busy with that camera, man, like... I was going all over the place. I ain't even care where it was because I had mad love in the hood. 
I was going to any project because I started out with something else called So What You Got. And I was going around, I, I knew a lot of people wanted to be rappers or whatever, everybody had a little talent. So my thing was, when I first started, I wanted to expose some of this talent. So I was going to like all, every hood, every project, like, mad love, so hey, so, y'all, mad love. Let me tell y'all a little something, man. I started filming way back when dudes was getting robbed for their camera. I mean, if you come to Brownsville and you, you got a camera, anything that somebody think is a come up, you, you, you get got. Like my man Killer Kev said, shout out to my man Killer Kev, you fool. Especially if you wasn't nobody. If you wasn't nobody and you was a mediocre ass nigga or whatever, or just a nigga trying to get by and you try to come out flashy with a little jewelry on, a little camera or something, whatever, they gonna get you. Let me tell y'all a nice little story right quick. One day we was in Brownsville, right? We was in a barber shop because we shot a scene for like a music video or something that we was doing. So we shot a scene in there, my man D Barber Shop on Blake Avenue. We shot it up in there. So we up in there, we had two cameras like this, we had the stands, we had the lights, we had all that, you know what I mean? So, I was rocking with two, two Puerto Rican dudes from the Bronx, my boy Josh and Saul. So we in there doing our thing, Brownsville niggas come up in there. So they, they didn't know I was with them. They come up in there, son, who them niggas with them cameras, son? Where the mother, son? Niggas ain't leaving here with them cameras, son. I looked at, I looked at that. I ain't gonna tell y'all who it was that stepped to me and said that. But they ain't know I was down like, nah, son, niggas with me. It was like, oh, word, son? All right, all right, all right, they good. But saying that just to say how grimy Brownsville dudes are. You know what I mean? These dudes. Didn't know these dudes from Adam, but they were ready to take the equipment. It's crazy. This is a little story I just wanted to share with y'all. Yo, a lot of these dudes from this hood, man, they came up rough. I mean, I know a lot of y'all come from different hoods and all that, but I can speak for this hood, and yo, this hood was crazy. And once again, don't forget to get your book, Say These Boys. It's a book I wrote.